Hello, in this video I'll show you how I made this beautiful three-dimensional shadow box picturing a girl and a bunny. This shadow box would work great as a nightlight for a young girl and could also be a perfect gift for a baby shower. This shadow box is going to be made of five different cut layers along with a front and back paper box. I've already designed the five different layers that make up the main part of the shadow box and I did that using my Pixelmator software. I have a couple other videos on the channel that show how to do that, so I'll link those here. I'm also using the same shadow box frame that I've already created in an additional video. I'll list that here as well. The topmost layer shows daffodils in a meadow with some tree leaves on the top. The layer behind that is going to be a young girl facing a bunny rabbit. The middle layer is a large tree that's off-centered behind the bunny rabbit and the girl. To add some additional detail to this tree, I also have a paper backer that I'll glue directly to the back. The back two layers are also trees and will really add a lot of depth to the overall shadow box. I'm cutting all seven of these layers with my Cricut machine while using Cricut Design Space. Then I'll assemble them all together and then put them into a wood and glass shadow box that I purchased from Hobby Lobby. I've sized my cut layers to fit inside the wood and glass shadow box that I've purchased, but just to make sure everything fits, I like to cut the very back piece of the paper frame first. I select this on the screen of my laptop and then click continue. Then I make sure that my material is set to cardstock plus. I found that this setting works best for these since I'm using an 80 weight cardstock. And then I load the material into the Cricut machine and start the cut. I'm using the blue light grip mat that's compatible with the Cricut machine. I have two of these mats, so I like to load one mat with paper and have it in the machine. While that piece is cutting, I put paper onto my second mat. Then once the first mat is finished cutting, I remove it and immediately have another mat ready to go. While that second mat is cutting, then I like to remove the cut image from that first mat. I keep alternating the mats back and forth until all seven of the layers are cut. This is five internal layers and then the front and back of the shadow box paper frame. The cardstock is prone to bending, which is why I like to use the light grip mat. If I use the standard grip or a heavier grip mat, sometimes the paper will bend when I'm trying to remove it from the mat. It's really hard to get those creases out. I've also found that one easy way to try and get the paper off the mat is to bend the mat over the edge of my work table rather than trying to pull the paper off. Once all of the layers are cut, I weed out any of the scrap pieces of paper. You can use a weeding tool or an X-Acto knife to do this. There's a couple spots that didn't cut great, which is why I'm using an X-Acto knife in some cases. I try to remove all of the scrap pieces of paper to the back side of the one layer. This way, any frayed edges or rough edges won't show on the very front of the design. The next material that I prep before I can construct the shadow box is these pieces of foam. This foam is going to act as the spacers between the layers, which is going to add all of the dimension to the three-dimensional shadow box. I also purchased a piece of the foam from Hobby Lobby and cut it using a ruler and an X-Acto knife. The back side of the foam is sticky, which is going to be really useful in making sure that all of our paper is lined up before we hot glue it in place. Next, I assemble the top and bottom pieces of the shadow box that's cut from paper. This is going to house all of our inner layers together. To do this, I fold around the scored lines that we cut and then bend the tabs around the corner. I glue the tabs into place using hot glue. The dimension is kind of tight on this box, so for the top piece, I glued the tabs to the outside and for the bottom piece, I glued the tabs to the inside this way, there's not going to be any tolerance issues when I put the top and bottom of the box together. Finally, I check the fit and make sure that the top piece of the paper frame slides easily onto the bottom piece of the paper frame. You want to make sure that it's not a super tight fit because if it's too tight, it can actually cause the cardstock to start to bend. Here you can see that this is a snug fit, but not too tight. Next, I'm going to assemble the five layers that make up the inside of the shadow box. I hot glue four of the foam strips around each of the edges of the first piece of paper. This is the backmost piece of paper. For one of the foam strips, I leave the sticky edge face up. 
Once I have all four of the foam strips glued down, I remove the paper that's protecting that sticky edge. Then I take the next layer and lay it down perfectly aligned to the layer underneath it. Once it's aligned on all four edges, I press down on the sticky side of the foam strip. This is just sticky enough to hold the paper together while I glue down the other strips, but it's not so sticky that once I pull it off to glue it in place, it's going to bend or rip the cardstock. Here you can see what the first two layers look like once it's fully assembled. This means that all four foam strips are glued to the bottom layer and to the layer on top of it. The middle layer is of the large tree with leaves. To add that extra dimension, I've created a new paper backer that's going to go only behind the branches and not behind the leaves. This is going to look like the tree itself has depth. Before I assemble this to the other two layers that will be behind it, first I use Elmer's glue to glue down this piece of paper. I like gluing this down with a paintbrush because it gives me a lot more control over the amount of glue to make sure that I don't have any glue that's going to show on the very front of the paper. I'm also taking care not to put any glue on this paper backer where the front of the tree is actually cut out to show dimension of the bark or the roots. I had taped the very bottom of the tree to the cardstock so that I could glue the top. Now that the top is set in place, I remove the tape that's on the bottom and use a very thin line of hot glue to make sure that the bottom is also attached. Again, I'm being careful not to let this show on the front of the tree. Now that this specific layer is assembled, I can continue assembling all five layers together. I follow the same process as before, gluing four foam strips down to each of the edges of the second to back layer. I leave one of the foam strips with a sticky side face up. Then I peel off the paper backing that's protecting that sticky side. I line up the layer with my large tree directly over the two layers that are glued together. And once it's perfectly in line, I press down on that foam strip that has sticky backing. This sticky foam strip is going to keep the top layer in place while I glue down the other three pieces of foam strips. Then I lift the paper off of the piece with the sticky backing and apply a line of hot glue to it as well. I really like utilizing the sticky side of the foam because it allows me more time and chances to reposition that top layer just in case it's not perfectly aligned the first time. Without using a sticky foam strip, I would have to use hot glue and it's much less friendly to try and fix any of these layers if they've been hot glued together. Again, I keep using the same process of gluing down these foam strips and next layers of paper. Once I reach the very topmost piece of paper, I don't apply any more foam strips. So if I have five pieces of paper, I've only applied four layers of foam strips. Here's what the five layers that make up the shadow box look like once they've been fully assembled. You can see how adding all of those foam strips adds a lot of depth and dimension to the overall image. Next I take the five assembled layers and put it into the paper shadow box frame. I put the layers into the back piece first, and then I press on the top layer. The fit should be snug, but not so tight that any of the layers are bending. Here you can see that everything has stayed nice and straight. Before I assemble everything into the wood and glass shadow box that I purchased, I hold the paper packet up to a light. Now I'm just checking that the light shines through well and all the dimensions are really clear. To assemble the shadow box, I put the paper packet into the wood and glass frame. First, I make sure that the glass is nice and clean. Once the paper packet is in place, I wrap LED lights around the back of the paper packet. I like using this shadow box frame from Hobby Lobby because it leaves enough room that I can wrap the LED lights without having the paper be squished. The LED lights that I use also have a sticky backing so I use the sticky back to wrap one layer around the actual edge of the shadow box frame, and then I turn the LED lights so that the light faces down into the paper packet. I tape these in place with clear tape. I'll add the LED lights that I purchased in the description below. Then I cut out the bottom right corner of the cardboard backer for the shadow box so that the cord of the LED lights can come out. Here is what the shadow box looks like without the back lights on. And here is what the shadow box looks like with the back lights on.
Thanks for watching this video for how I made a shadow box of a bunny and girl in a meadow scene. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and as always, like and subscribe to see more content.